Hey guys, I'm Sebastian with Performance Place, part of the locally world famous chiropractors in Costa Mesa, California. We're going to cover the sciatica series today and a lot of the questions that you guys have had and asked us about sciatica. We've searched Google for a lot of these questions and these are a lot of the questions that commonly people will ask and so why not address them right here right now. All right, we have the playlist which has all the other questions so go make, make sure to go through and check them out. At any point during this video, you can go to the timestamps. I'm going to timestamp it up for the questions that we're going to answer right now. And I apologize, I've got to look at my phone for these. What triggers sciatica? That's going to be timestamp one. How long does sciatica flare up? Uh, how long do sciatica flare ups last? How long does sciatica last? All right, we're going to cover those three questions primarily. The first one is what triggers sciatica? Now, what, trigger, what triggers your sciatica is different than what triggers other people's sciatica. I first should first start with that. Uh, we did a video, uh, I want to say about a year or so ago, where it was about sciatica and three exercises that you should not do with sciatica, or at least most of the time. And we got a lot of people who were like, yeah, this is a really good video, and other people that said, I don't get it. This is so confusing. Do I do this or do I do that? Well, the first thing is, no, again, noticing that what bothers your sciatica is different than what bothers other people's sciatica. It's not always the same. Um, some people have what we call flexion intolerant sciatica, all right? And so this is where their body doesn't like the forward bend, okay? This is the sciatic nerve for me. I'm going to bend forward, and it's going to stretch. And if it's really attached to something in the low back, like a low back disc herniation that's uh, it's part of the puzzle, rounding the low back will actually dramatically increase the problem. And a lot of people in this position are like, nope, that creates that searing leg pain or the feeling of ropey tightness in the hamstring or the buttocks pain that I have. Other people, when they actually go like this and they flatten their back, all their symptoms go away. And so their sciatica is more so attached to the rounding mechanic of the leg, of the low back. Other people, we find that actually just bending here at the hips is enough to trigger their sciatica. And so even something like a hip hinging intolerant type of sciatica would be um, uh, the, the classification. And the other one is backward bend, the extension intolerant sciatica. Now this one doesn't necessarily tension the nerve per se, but it can compress it. All right. Um, a lot of times the bend forward types, especially with the low back round, those are again disc herniations, protrusions, some type of disc injury of some type. Uh, even fractures of the front part of the spine, the vertebral bodies can, in theory, create some type of um, flexion intolerant uh, sciatica. These people can be either or um, the stuff that I just mentioned, or it can be things like foraminal stenosis, pinched nerve. Um, I guess central canal stenosis probably, uh, and uh, those are probably the big ones. And then backwards is going to be more of like a foraminal stenosis, a radiculopathy, uh, and, and so on. And so it depends. What triggers my sciatica might not trigger your sciatica. Now in the first group, the flexion intolerant sciatica, like I mentioned, things that will bother them is going to be things like Rounding their back, sitting into a chair and rounding your back, but better posture will actually make you feel better, all right? Um, even things like, uh, I'm, I'm sure people will, it's, there, there's always, <laughs> there, I mean, we made a whole video on, on sciatica or low back pain with sex that apparently uh, YouTube didn't want to rank for us, but if, if I'm in an extended position right here, I'm probably fine, but rounding won't be, okay? And so what you're doing in the position that your back is in, in this case, does matter, all right? Picking up objects with a rounded back, like I said before, can create some problems for you, but if you use your hips more so, it'll, it'll probably improve it. People that will have triggers that have more of the tension-based um, problem with their, with their sciatic nerves, uh, these people, the, the hip, kind of the ready position bothers them. Stuff that has knee straight and hips flexed and toes up will create the problem. And so you know, I'm in the position right here, like if I'm doing like a deadlift or if I'm doing a stiff-legged deadlift more so, this is gonna trigger their problem. Something like a squat will actually probably make them feel pretty good. Uh, and so things like hamstring stretches like this, this is gonna trigger their problem. 
And so we find a lot of people that have sciatica that is triggered over and over again by they're trying to stretch out that ropey hamstring. This is an absolute no-go. And most of the time, if we just simply tell people to stop stretching their hamstrings, then their sciatica pain will go away if they're in that category. By the way, note that my low back is rounding this one, so this would fall into category one as well. Now, category three is people who have sciatica pain with walking, with bending backwards, uh, with, with deadlifting with perfect posture, sitting with perfect posture, laying on their belly, <coughs> sleeping face down, sleeping on their back on a hard, on a hard uh, 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 bed, sleeping on their back with a saggy bed with the legs and a pillow underneath their legs will help them. But this will make category one worse. Now, if you guys are having some issues kind of thinking about this and conceptualizing it, I suggest you go backwards and watch this again, okay? This is probably the biggest problem um, that people will encounter when not recovering from sciatica is that they neglect to figure out what triggers their problem. And you might wonder, well, how am I supposed to figure out how or what mechanics mine are? You go see somebody, all right? Uh, a good experienced clinician will be able to spend some time uh, figuring out what triggers it, what makes it feel better, and correlating those findings into an actual physical exam. You don't need to have a bunch of fancy studies and images to be, to done, uh, to be done to figure this stuff out. Someone has to spend time. They have to be like your Sherlock Holmes and help you figure out the puzzle that it is your sciatica, and then they can better suggest things. This is all theoretical because I don't know what's going on with you. All right. By the way, before we go on the next question, uh, we do have a gift for you. There's a webinar. Uh, I think we're going to keep it a webinar. We might change it. But there's a gift that we put on these things that if you want more information beyond what YouTube provides, um, go get that thing. All right. It's free. You can check it out. Um, it's more extensive information. And, and whenever we get questions and comments, we say, go check it out. Um, it answers a lot of the questions that people tend to have. Also, you can work with us virtually or in person. We're on Costa Mesa, California. We see a lot of people with sciatica and leg pain in it, and it works out really well. Um, hope we're very honest with what we do. I think we are. Um, and we'll be able to lay out a good plan of attack of, of what you guys should do at home. Now, the second question is, how long will sciatica uh, flare-ups last? Um, I can say this is a big range. Uh, I've seen people who have had flare-ups that have lasted two, three weeks to a month. Um, I've had people who did, were working with them in close proximity and were saying, uh, like they're sent home with some homework and they go out and do something like running, which might flare it up, like a long leg stride might flare it up. They say, well, I went running, it flared it up. And you say, great, do your homework. They're like, oh, five minutes later, it's gone. It's decreased. The thing, the way you can decrease the how long sciatica lasts is by literally just taking pressure off of the nerve and slackening the nerve. Stop stretching it and stop putting pressure on it. And put not, uh, you might wonder, how do I not put pressure on it? Well, it comes down to the mechanics of what bother it, and then you reverse engineer it. Whatever bothers it, you do the opposite. If rounding bothers it, you extend. If extending bothers it, you round. If stretching the leg bothers it, don't stretch the leg, right? A lot of times, so when we work with people in person, a lot of times we, um, we say that we're trying to cover three things originally in our first interaction. Number one is we want to figure out a diagnosis and the mechanics that will increase it as well as what will decrease it, all right? And that's how you would cool it down. The second thing is we need to figure out what are you doing throughout your day unknowingly, which is creating this problem to continue. Are you stretching your hamstring? Stop. The third thing is a lot of times there's a corrective exercise or a supportive exercise which will help out so this thing isn't so um, temperamental. Um, so that's all day one stuff that we typically do with people. Um, ask your doctor to, to do those things for you. Do a good thorough examination and I think you're going to find out that your flare-ups don't last as long as they need to. Um, they really don't. Uh, we've seen people uh, and we've had a lot of reviews where their leg pain dissipates out of their leg and at least centralizes towards their low back or glute area over the course of three days, seven days. Like it, it didn't take too long. Um, sometimes even within the same session, it's already, it's up. It's fantastic when that happens. The third thing is how long does sciatica last? Now this is, um, again, based upon the, what kind of programming you have. If you have guidance and direction, you're going to find out that you're going to improve a lot sooner. 
Uh, we had a gentleman come in here recently that he had some sciatica. Um, he was trying to do his own DIY for about two months and he said he was having problems. He was lifting weights. He thinks deadlifting was the thing that aggravated a little bit more so. It hurts to drive in to see us. It hurts to drive anywhere. Uh, and sitting was bothersome. It was worse in the morning and so on. And um, we just saw him recently again and we saw him for one session and we said, how did it go? And he's like, it's definitely better. It's not perfect. It's definitely better. And I said, how do you know? And he said, well, it doesn't hurt doing everything that I that, uh, hurt doing before. Like I can bend forward with no problem. The only thing that really bothers me is driving now. So he recognized that doing two weeks of something structured and ideal for his situation was better than two months of doing random stuff that he was picking out on YouTube and on, on Instagram and all these other places. Something structured can decrease the duration time that you have it. Now, I don't believe in scare tactic in people at all, but I believe everybody needs to know the reality of things with sciatica. If, it's, if you actually have a nerve that has a problem, it has pressure on it, you need to deal with it soon, all right? Uh, if it gets to the point where you're having trouble moving the leg or the foot, um, or you're having other functional changes in the leg, um, noticing muscle loss and things like that, it's gonna get harder. It's, gonna, it's not like you can't feel normal again, but it gets harder. And the longer people let this thing go on, especially if it's consistent, if it's intermittent and, and, and activity dependent, it's not as big of a rush. But if it's a consistent, then you need to go somewhere very soon and deal with it, all right? Just have someone tell you exactly what to do. Now, subscribe to the YouTube channel. There's more of these sciatica videos coming out. Um, we do pride ourselves in giving the best free information that you can on YouTube, as well as podcasts. We have a bunch of podcasts and things too. It's called Restoring Human Movement. Um, but if you want one-on-one -on -one attention and help, just tell us. We do virtual and in person, uh, and we give you very, very structured uh, uh, things you can do at home that can help you very, very quickly. So we'll see you guys next time.